Twice in its three-year history, Gary Anderson has lifted the Tartan 10-pin Classic Trophy. Frank Margiotta was a finalist in 1998, but he's yet to triumph. Richard Hood, the UK number one, is also the reigning Scottish Open champion. Lewis Montfort from Barcelona is one of Europe's leading players. The quarterfinals of the AltoDigital.com Tartan 10 pin classic have gone to form, with Anderson, Margiotta, and Hood winning through. Just one quarterfinal left, Luis Montfort against Fife's Andy Gillespie. Now let's join Katrina Harvey at Dundee University. Hello and welcome to the University of Dundee for the AltoDigital.com Tartan 10 Pin Classic 2000 tournament. We've got some of the best bowlers from across the UK and Europe here and our first competitor today is all the way from Spain. So can we have a big Dundonian hola for Luis Montford? <laughs> Louis, 12 times Spanish champion and many the Bronze European Cup in 97. Are you looking forward to bowling in Scotland then? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Have you been here before? No, it's the first time. I'm glad to be here. What did you make of your welcome? Well, let's try now. So you, you, you've actually scored 306 times in your career. How does that feel? Well, it feels very good. I would like to do it every time, but you know, it's impossible. Now I have to say here, you list your hobbies as golf and women. Yeah. Presumably not at the same time. Well, now I found one that's very good. She's sitting up there, so I hope we can be longer with her. So just play golf now. I feel it's still a black now. <laughs> Excellent. Well, good luck anyway, All Lewis right, Montford. <laughs> now, Lewis' opponent is just from down the road in Glenrothes. He has a huge fan club in tonight. Can we welcome Andy Gillespie? <laughs> That must be all your friends and families and relations in tonight. Just a few, I think, yeah. Now, the poster says awesome, Andy. Are you? Um, sometimes. <laughs> and what's your bowling like? Um, pretty good sometimes as well, yeah. Now, obviously, you're up against a really good competitor here. Do you fancy your chances? Um, yeah, well, one game, any could, any could happen over one game. How have your preparations been going? Well, I played um, quite a few games in Dundee on Friday. So that's went pretty well, yeah. Well, it should be a great game here tonight anyway. Let's hear it for Andy. I'll pass you back over to Sid Wardell, our commentator. Well, uh, thanks, Catriona. Uh, certainly p putting the glimpse on uh, uh, the glamour boy of international bowling when it comes to uh, super grunge. Luis is the boy that makes the Gallagher twins look clean shaven. He is some performer. Rampant Queen fan. There's a great impression of Freddie doing Barcelona. Age 22, 15 years of Bola and box office with a capital B. Look out for it when this lad lets roll. Superstar. <laughs> Thank you. 
Seeing more meat on a jockey's whip. Lean and mean, charismatic, as I say, in the super grunge. Some people sit with their charts and drawn lines on her. He's been sat doing Mills and Boone on the balcony with his lady friend. And it could be a crack of this, though, because as uh, awesome Andy just said, anything can happen. <laughs> Something for me waiting to commentate soon as Richard Hood, who certainly knows that anything can happen out there on that specially laid pitch. Turn into the look a lot now from Glenn Rothers in the Proud Kingdom of Faith. Awesome Andy Gillespie. In line with great actor Awesome Wells. He's adopted a nickname and his fans will go absolutely batchy if he lives up to their hopes of Awesome. 41, bull and 25 years. Uh, and in that time, never had a 300, but was a Scottish match player champion in 99. <laughs> Long way offline with that one. His first practice ball. And his probation officer issued that picture. And Big Lou is apparently the nickname of Monfort. Now, if you go around calling yourself Big Lou, you might get some not funny looks in Barcelona, but where I come from, I wouldn't put it out there. I was called Big Lou. Anyway, Richard. Just hot from the boards. Any comments on the actual state of the pitch, particularly the oil? Well, I think that the, the lane condition is uh, perfectly acceptable uh, to the bowlers out there. Um, Seem to worry the last two juniors who saw a week ago. Well, I didn't actually get to see that match, unfortunately, but uh, I, I saw these two in practice and they both look quite comfortable, so I'm looking forward to a good match. Played against this lad? Have you beaten him? I have played against Luis once, yes, and he beat me. By uh, narrow or? It was well? a narrow margin, yes. Pressed by that opening one. Yes, it's always nice to start with a strike. It settles you down very, very quickly. Luis looking very smooth here. Playing round the second arrow mark, ball's coming into the pocket nicely there. Good mix on the pins. And according to the uh, seeding, as it were, you want to meet Lewis in the semi final. Should we begin? Yes, I'm going to meet one of these two. I don't know whether it's going to be Lewis or Andy at the moment, but uh, we shall see. As I say, from the Kingdom of Fife, room of John Thomas Wilson. Jockey, good pal of mine. Cranking it, putting lots of wrist work in successfully. Well, here goes arrow Andy. two. And it's uh, almost identical shot to Luis there. Uh, just slightly light in the pocket and a lot of mix on the pins. And they both started with identical looking strikes. Yep, we're well, fans like that, Tony's enemies. Uh, I used to knock about one time with a Fife Darts team, a fearsome bunch. Oh, swallowed someone called Magic Cook, 50 50 vodka and cook. And he didn't like the lose. Fair too full, that one, I think. Oh, yes, that was way too full. He'll not be happy with that shot. So the last shot he played was more or less back on the second arrow and that one was one or two boards inside and he's paid the penalty. Difficult spare. Probably the only chance is bouncing a pin out of the back of the machine. Don't know about the back of the machine. In front of our camera took a hammer in there. Good chance then for Andy here, Richard. Yes, he really want to ram home the advantage with another strike here. That's represented Scotland's uh, world world championship in the world championship. As Andy, great chance here. Can score possible 300 in the 10 frames. 
through arrow two. Goes to the Brooklyn side successfully. Well, Andy will be happy with the result, but he won't be happy with the shot. He's pulled it like Luis did, but he pulled it more, and he's found the Brooklyn pocket and struck, so he's already got at least a 20-pin advantage. Did he all the line, or was that anything intentional, or was it just a mistake? Well, he came up a, bit, a little bit light on the first shot, so he might have tried to make an adjustment and over-adjusted. Luis has come up heavy on the head pin there again. Well, he looked quite smooth, the arm went through quite nice, but he must have pulled it inside. Because he's almost gone Brooklyn on that shot, but he's left himself a regulation spare, shooting from left to right across the lane. And it is a human skull in the ball. It is a real... So he's got a skull in his bowling ball. We're not sure if it's real Spanish bone of some Spanish ancestor or Pamplona plastic. Yeah. Mm, both bowlers seem to be struggling with the condition here. They're both coming up heavy or crossing the head pin at the moment. This is a tough spare. He's going to try and put the ball into the gap between the two pins and bounce off of the front pin and the ball will deflect over towards a, the 10 pin and take the 10 pin out hopefully. But it needs quite a, a high degree of precision this shot. Looks dead set as the fifer. There yeah, you see why he's hit the front pin full in the face and the ball hasn't deflected because of that. So he's left just the 10 pin stand in. And after three frames, it's an eight pin advantage to Luis. Sorry, to Andy, my apologies. So, we've got a Spaniard on uh, the pitch with a skull, which he thinks could be real in his ball. So presumably somebody's digging up Braveheart's heart and getting a desiccated form in a Scottish ball. As Luis comes in with that nice relaxed style, he doesn't stay down very long, does he? Well, the one thing Luis had to do here was to not pull the ball again, so that's why he's been a little bit light on the head pin. He's obviously made an adjustment to stop pulling the ball. And good action on the ball, producing a lot of pin action, and he's mixed out the strike there, so he'll be happy with that one. Say, so big Freddie Mercury fan, which you'd expect from Barcelona. As Andy polishes up. And some lads have been saying their favourite food is pasta and their favourite drink is water. He's a real fight for this and he likes now better than to wash down chicken jalfrezi with Morgan spiced rum. Yeah! Yeah! Ah, must be the ingredient for striking! Andy playing just outside second arrow there and the ball curving into the pocket beautifully. A great strike from Andy there. So that's what the perfect place to hit the right-handers stateside. Yes, pretty, that's pretty much perfect. It was perhaps, if you're going to be super critical, a little bit light, but, I mean, the way the ball was coming into the pocket, you've got to expect a strike off of that one. So one of the two favourites, along with my co-commentator Richard Hood, Luis here. Oh, that was again cross into the pocket. Yeah, Luis is struggling out there, but you know, he's got a double, so he's getting himself back into the game here. 
it's not a good shot. He's gone Brooklyn, pulled it again, but he's got the right result. Well, not only Freddie Mercury fan, still his Freddie style of addressing the audience and the ball. This is the Tartan Tempin Classic. And one of the favourites, Luis Manfred, 13 times Spanish champion, holding no qualms at all for the lad from Glen Rothers in Fife, Bullen now. That's well done by Andy there. He's matched Luis's double, so Andy still has an eight pin advantage. It looked a slightly nervous shot because it bounced a little bit on the lane as he let go of it, but the direction was right, and that's the important thing. Yep. Well, you got a nickname like Awesome, you've got to live up to it. Only name to give a kid, eh? How awesome's been a right little. Louis poised. Nice follow through and a bit of crank in the wrist. Yes, that was a really, really good shot from uh, Luis there. Uh, he's rammed home the advantage of the, the double that he had and now Andy has to respond again to maintain his lead. Favourite to player, uh, says Andy, the one and only Tim Mack of the US here. I've seen him many times in the UK. A man to copy? Well, a very difficult man to copy because you need to be very, very physical to play the way Tim does. Swinging them out almost into the gutter and then homing on, on the head pin like a Scud missile. <laughs> Full hit again, same ball as his last strike. Well, this is a fantastic match. I think we're going to get a comparison here. Here are the two players side by side. See how high Luis's backswing is compared with Andy's there. Why wow, was Luis not happy? Oh, oh, he was happy. He was happy the there, yeah. So this, each set in on three consecutive strikes. How would you rather play next round? Um, at the moment, they're both looking gonna, like they're going to be hard to beat. So. <laughs> really pick between the two of them. Down the Brooklyn again. Now I've been told you can't really do that deliberately. <laughs> you right no, that? Good, good bowlers won't do that deliberately. He won't be happy with that shot but he will be happy with the result. So what causes it? it he's going down the well. obvious right hand angle just around to the left of arrow two. Hoping to come in to the right of the head pin and in fact hit in the left. Yeah, I didn't see anything particularly obvious in, in his technique there. It may just be that he's a little bit nervous and his arm's a bit tight and he's pulling it because of it. He just had a horrendous journey from Spain. I think he had to hitch a, a left his plane. It was a plane dispute. And he had to do 150 miles on the Nombra Catro Catro bus. So he struggled to get here. Yeah. Thin. That didn't look a striking ball, it was so thin. Well, and his face told me that he wasn't going to strike there, but then the ball actually did the job for him. He didn't like the look of it when he let go of it, but it's curved up just enough. Good action on the pins and mixing them all out. What a match this is turning out to be. Four baggers alike coming into the last three frames and the score well Andy has held that eight pin advantage for some time now because they're just matching each other strike for strike oh that was good luck on the tempin well it was a good shot um, 
it was a little bit lucky to get the temping out in the end, but it was a good enough shot to strike, but the temping was very late going. Five bagger to the Spaniard. Pressure on the local lad from down the road in Fife to strike here, taking his time. And concentration, a muscle memory, a snidger look possibly needed. As his fans crane forward, the fans absolutely going ballistic for the lads from Fife. Does the well, song I say 100 Fifers and all? I think Andy didn't like this one either, but in the end, his strike. Look, okay, he's pulled it very, very big time there, and it's yep. gone right across the head pin. And Mix them out on the opposite side of the So he's at least two boards out at of alignment. He was coming down the right. At least two, yeah, maybe even three. They're both riding their luck at the moment a little bit here, Sid. Well, that's presumably the appeal of the game. Is this anything with conditions of the aisle, or is it just a... Well, in the previous junior game, the ball was swinging much more than they both competed as falling bank on at that stage. Yeah, well, different parts of the, the lane actually will hook more than other parts of the lane, Sid, and, and it may well be that the juniors were, were actually playing a, a dry part of the lane that will actually hook a little bit more for them. This is an excellent shot from Luis here. Gets him back into the lead, but Andy can respond. Top class opponent, I'll remind you, the Spaniard. In 97 was bronze in the European Championships. Very little in it, but pressure on the Scott all the time to get the right line for the strike. Too full. Well, Andy surrendered the advantage to Luis at last. Going into the vital 10th frame, he's going to be trailing. This is not a good shot. He's pulled it heavy on the head pin, and he's very lucky that he didn't leave pins on both sides of the lane there. But he's left himself a relatively easy spare which if he makes it will leave him uh, about four pins down, I think. So only a four pins in it in favour of the Spaniard. <laughs> Here we go then, final frame. Oh, I know how crucial this final frame can be, Sid. It nearly cost me big time against Pauline. Four in it, I'll repeat, in favour of Luis. And if you roll through in the last frame, you can do three strikes. Yep, that's the match over. Luis will win this match now. And he can't respond enough. Luis now has 14 pins advantage. And even if he were to have just a bad count of a seven count or something like that, he must run out the winner. I suppose mathematically it is still possible for Andy, but the reality is that these bowlers are too good to, to throw the bad shot. So the 22-year-old Spaniard crashes down yet another strike, and that's definitely good for the gallant Scott. 
Well, and he didn't get relief. the bad shot. Luis shut the door with that one for certain. Luis is now going to end up with 250 something and Andy's maximum score is 224. for a bit of Spanish flair here to end with three. What do you do, right? Well, I think he probably just relaxed now that he got the game one there. It didn't really matter to him what he threw. He could have missed and he'd still win the game. So it's probably just relaxing and glad it's over with. Not an episode of Star Wars, but the ballistics of a different sort and the human factor are never far off. Awesome, and he meets his match. And what would you predict the sort of scoring in your game with Luis will be then, seeing as he's run out on 256 here? Yeah? Well, we both were quite comfortable on the lanes. Um, I would expect a very good match, both of us scoring over 200. Be nice to finish with a strike. And he's not far off it. Well, he can actually finish with a strike if he spares this one. Said, so, oh, something's disturbed him again. Yeah, spare gets you one more shot, whereas uh, strike in the last frame sets you up for two more shots. Gets in the extra shot. Last ball by Awesome. <laughs> Only a nine, but without a bit a couple of shots before. So the glamour boy of the oiled woodwork from Spain, Luis Montfort, does for Andy Gillespie by 256 to 232. That was a very intriguing game, worthy of a final. Oh yeah, it was very hard. Andy played unbelievable, superb game, and, and I had a little bit of problems with the approach. It was a little bit sticky. It made me made a couple of bad shots, but I was very lucky. I made strike, and that helped to win him. You made nine strikes eventually, so that that's what's carried you through. Yeah, I was. As I said, I was a little bit lucky because there was two shots that shouldn't be strike. So if it was one ninety game, it wouldn't surprise me. I was lucky. You've said you're lucky. You've got a semi-final place against Richard Hood. He's been uh, ranked number one in the UK for the past couple of years. That should be an, an entertaining one as well. Well, uh, Richard knows we bowled like uh, two years ago in the same kind of tournament, and I beat him. So I hope I'm the same lucky as that time, and I beat him again. Well, well done anyway. Lewis Montfort and, of course, Andy Gillespie. <laughs> A short break, but don't go away because coming up it's the last junior quarter final. <laughs>